Hello everyone, today we are going to be doing this Doctor Strange Portal effect. This is a request by a subscriber. Let's get to it. Under effects, under effects here, bring in a fusion comp to create a timeline. Let's zoom in a bit. Put the playhead on here and zoom in a bit by dragging this. So we expand it. Then I click on the fusion comp. By default, it is five seconds. I want to make it 10 seconds. But I press Ctrl D on the keyboard and type 10 colon 00, zero enter. Now make sure the playhead is on the comp. Then I go to the fusion footage. I drag the media out to the side to make space for what we want. Seeing as the rotation is in a circle, I'm going to use an ellipse mask. So I'm going to bring in an ellipse mask. This will drive the particle animation. So let's drag this ellipse mask to this left viewer. Under the inspector for ellipse, uncheck solid. And for the border width, we set it to 0 0.0025. Then I want it to appear from nothing and then start circling. So what I'll do is I'll go to length. Right now, I'll put the playhead on frame 0. This confirms it's on frame 0. And I'll go to length, keyframe it, then drag the length to 0. So I'm dragging it down. You can see the line just disappear like so. Then I'm going to go to frame 30. I'll just type 30 in here and press enter. And I'll make this length. I'll not make it the full length. I'll make it half the length. That's 0 0.5. And I want, after it has done this movement, I want it to keep rotating round and round. So I'll go to angle, right click on it, click on expression. And in here, I'll type time times 12. Time is simply the number of frames. So if it moves to frame 20, time will be equal to 20. Okay. So we do this. So this moves in consonance with the frame rate. So if I play this, let's click outside of the ellipse and I go to frame zero and I play it back. So we have that. But you'll notice something if you go to the first frame, there's a dot. I want this dot not to be there. So I click on ellipse mask. Still under the inspector, I will keyframe the level, drag it to zero, then move forward by one frame by pressing the forward arrow on the keyboard, then increase the level to one. So that way, if I click out of the ellipse mask, I go down to zero, everything disappears, then it comes up like so. So now we have the animation for the ellipse driving the particle system. Now for the particle itself, I'm going to create the particle I want the particle emitter to use. I bring in a background node, then I go to the color on the inspector, set the color to white, then under the image tab, I uncheck auto resolution, so I want to change this, and I'll set this to 100, the width to 100, and the height to 10. So if we drag this to the right viewer, we see we have the particle. Now let's bring in the particle system. I click on an empty part of the node grid, shift spacebar, PEM for particle emitter, shift spacebar, PVO, PVO or PVOTEX, shift spacebar, PTAN or PTANGENT FORCE, add, then shift spacebar, PREN or PRENDER. I will click add. So we have all the four nodes we need to achieve this. I go first to the particle emitter. I want to connect this ellipse to particle emitter. So I'm going to go to region because this here is going to be the region within which I want the particles to emit. So I'm going to go to the particle emitter under region. Under this region, I'm going to pick bitmap and I'll connect this particle emitter to this input that just appeared. Done. I'm going to click particle emitter again, go to style. Then under style, I'm going to pick bitmap. Another input point is up here. I'm going to connect this to that. And we have our connections done now to the settings. I click on particle emitter. 
I go to Controls tab. Number of particles, let's set it to 200. The lifespan, set it to 50. And then set the temporal distribution to randomly distributed. Then expand velocity, drop down, set the velocity to 0 0.01. Then we go to angle Z, set that to 90. And angle Z variance sets that also to 90. Now for the rotation, uncheck always face camera. And then this drop down pick rotation relative to motion. So as the ellipse mask moves, the particles follow that motion. And for the Z variance, set this to 25. Now we go to style. Under style, we expand size controls. Set the size to 0 0.2. Then I don't want the particles to just cut off. I want it to fade off gently. So I'm going to make the out, make it 0 0.75. So it's going to fade out gently from 0 0.75 of its lifespan. That's three quarters of its lifespan. And then we go to region. Region is already set. So we are done with particle emitter. We go on to the P vortex. There's nothing much to adjust here. Just increase the strength here to. Three, the P tangent force, don't change any setting. Just go to region. Under this region mode, set it to when inside region. Then this region that is currently under all, set it to bitmap. And connect this to the P tangent force. Then for P render, we don't want the outermost mode to be 3D. Click on 2D to set it to 2D. And if we drag this to this right viewer, if we play it, we have a strange portal. Pretty easy. Now for this look, it's just white. I wanted to have this fiery, flamey color. So I'll go to particle emitter. I'll go to style. I'll expand color controls. Under color controls, I'll expand color over life controls. Click on this first point here. Click on this color swatch. Let's pick something yellowy but almost white, like so. FFF397, if you want to be specific. Then we click on here to add another font. Then click on this again and set this to something more orangey, like so. That comes to FF7417. Click OK. And tada, we have the makings of what we want. In the part of the meta, we can do a little thing. Let's go to style. On the size, we can just increase the size variance to maybe 0 0.2. So it makes it look a little more random. OK. Then we have. That's it. That's the portal effect. I just want to add a little jazz to it here and there, place it on a footage and see how that looks. So now let's bring in a footage. So I'm going to open the media pool. I'll bring this footage in. Let me drag that to the left viewer. Let me close this media pool. I want to now place this, which is here on top of this. So we just need a merge node. Let's put that to the tail end here. Bring this footage down here. Connect the footage to the background of the merge because I want to put this on top. So this will be connected to the merge image to the like So and if we drag this to the right view, are. so we have it. We have the essence of what we want. But let's just move it around and make it look a little nicer. So I'm going to, after this particle render, shift space bar, I'm going to bring in a transform node. Okay. Then let's. Reduce the size a little bit. And go here. Let's just say 0 0.45. Yeah, so put it here, somewhere around here. But you'll see that if I click outside of here, the edges of the transform is cutting it off. So I'll go to the ellipse. I'll connect the width to the height because I want a situation where I reduce the width, we reduce the height so it's uniform. I right click on height. I click on expression, and I'll connect this using this point here and connect it to width. So 
now I can reduce the width. So it looks a bit better, like so. So let's just say 0 0.4. And we're good to go. Now we have this hanging in there. We need to go to the pivot vortex too and adjust the size to the same thing. So I'll go here and adjust this to 0 0.4. So we have this going. Now the next thing we do, I want to use the transform on position. This just a little bit towards the water. Like so. And then, because it's on the water, and it's on an image. I want the fact that this is luminous to glow up the environment. So I'll click on transform, shift spacebar, soft glow, enter. Then the soft glow, I'll just increase the size to 100. So it has this effect on the whole environment. Let me drag this forward a little bit, like so. But I also want this to reflect in the water. So I'm going to click on an empty part of the node grid and press shift spacebar and bring in a transform node. I will not use this normal transform. I'll use this other transform. I click on it. It tends to go back. Just click on it again. I click on add. So I'll connect this transform before the soft glue to this other transform. Then let's move this forward just a little bit. And I want to now connect this to the to this by dragging it like this. It will create a merge loop, like so. Then I'll go to this transform. Under inspector, I'm going to drag this. I'll rotate it to 180. Then I'll go to flip horizontal. And I'll pull it down, like so. Then the pitch, I'll just drag the pitch like so. Just arrange it a bit. Let me do the yaw. Like so. And then we just move it down a bit more so it's on the water. And then let me just like so. But I want it to be a little forward, so I'm just going to go to was a bit like so, 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 so. Just going to reduce the height a little bit, like so. It looks like it's on the water. Like that, I can move it a bit, so not that. And then, let's just say 0 0.4. So now it's on the water, but the challenge, I'm going to move it up a bit, it's a bit too distant from it. Something like this, like this. So then I want to make it that it's not so sharp because it's on the water. It shouldn't be that sharp. So I'm going to go first to merge. Go to apply mode and pick screen. And that doesn't change much. I go to blend, set it to 0 0.2. Has some effects. But if I zoom in here, you'll see that it doesn't adapt itself to ripple. So I'm going to have to add the ripple effect to it. So to do this, I'm going to click on an empty part of the node tree, shift space bar, bring in a create bar map node, click on an empty space, shift space bar, bring in a displace node, this one, and add, connect this bump, bump map, connect this bump map to the grid input of the displace. Now connect. You know, this is this one is what we want to apply the displace to. So this is going to be enter the input of the displace, and what you enter the bump map will be this media in this footage. I'm going to connect this footage to the input of the bump map node. Let me arrange it a bit better and pull this up like so. Let's pull this down. So for this create bump map, let's let's see that on the left viewer. Click on it. Under inspector, set it to five and increase the height scale so it has all the bumps here. And we go to the displace node. Let's drag that to the left view. If you zoom in, we we'll see where we have the makings of a ripple. But before we do that, 
Let's just move this down a little bit, move this down a little bit. Go to this displace, click on XY, drag offset to zero, X offset to zero, Y offset to zero. Then set X refraction to 0 0.02 and Y refraction to 0 0.02. So we already have the makings of the ripple, but it's kind of jagged. So to smoothen that out, I'm going to put a blur node in between the create bump map and the displace. I'm going to click on create bump map and click sheet space bar blur. And if I pick this particular blur and click add, it looks a bit better. Let's just make it five. Five is too much. Let's make it three. Okay, three needs to look a little better. Let's make it two and see what happens. I think I prefer two. So it's just a matter of reference. Then we go to, so the output of this now, we'll now put it in here instead of, now this was connected here before, which is what we're seeing here, but we need to replace that. So I'm going to connect this to replace this. So now if we zoom in, see it actually ripples over there. Just to make it look a little more interesting. I'm going to put a glow on top of here. So shift space bar, soft glow. Now this soft glow just adds just a little bit more pep to it and it looks a little nicer. So if we go to make this a single viewer, let's connect this to media out and connect, drag media out to this viewer. Click on here to fit it. Let's just drag this down to make it bigger and let's fleet. You see, we have that, and it flows with the water. Beautiful stuff. But guys, this is it. Just in addition, let me check, let me show you something. If you want to increase the craziness of these sparks, you can just go to P tangent force and increase this to 0 0.2. So it decreases the craziness and all. If you want to if you first you want to increase the randomness of this movement, you can go to PM meter, go down here, and you can set this to move to like 40. So it's just a matter of what you want to achieve. I hope you had fun on this one. It's a little longer than I thought it would be. And uh, see you on the next one. Cheers.